welcome to the most wonderful real estate podcast ever, the show that gives you the lowdown on how to become a successful real estate entrepreneur with more than 30 years of experience. America's top female real estate investor one is an expert in financial freedom and turning dreams into realities. Now's your chance to become a Dwandonair with the help of Dwan. Here's to a flaming hot foreclosure market with the help of Dwan. Cheers. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of Inside the Minds of Today's Millionaires. This is uh, Dwan Ben Twyford and our podcast is called the most wonderful real estate podcast ever. And as you all know, every Thursday, I bring you lots of really interesting guests and we like to dig in and see what's happening in their mind. And maybe they can say something that would help trigger you to open up a door, something that's been blocking you from having success. So uh, the motto here at Wonderful is people before profit. So if it resonates with you, you are at the right place and this is your time. And I have a really interesting guest today. I'm super excited to ask her, you know, all the wonderful questions that we ask. And her name is Kelly Cutchin. So Kelly, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to talk to you today. Not as excited as I am to talk to you today. (laughs) (laughs) See, Kelly thinks I have all her questions. I do not. We like (laughs) to dig in and find out what's inside of your head. Because, you know, there's just... Everyone I interview is so interesting and everyone started their success path so differently. And a few people have said things to me even. It was like, wow, you know what? I I needed to hear that today. I needed to hear that today. So everyone knows that we start off with the drinks with Dwan. So we're having water. She's having lemon water and I'm on my smart water kick. So cheers to you. Cheers. I said, do two hands with this one. It's so refreshing now. And everybody just take a deep breath. Oh, and just shake off whatever you got going on and just get ready to learn and have an open mind and have a lot of fun. So basically, Kelly, what we want to know is what's your deal? I, well, okay. I appreciate it. So we want to know, we want to know who you are right now today and how we get in touch with you. And then I'm going to backtrack and ask you a bunch of questions. Okay, exciting. So my name is Kelly Kutchin and my my professional title is country manager here in the United States with a company called Money Corp. Um, From a personal perspective, I live in Orlando, Florida, which is actually where I was born and raised, which apparently is quite unique because no one that lives in Orlando is actually from Orlando. (laughs) That is so true. That's what I'm told, but you know. I still have some high school buddies. We all live around here, but but I believe it. There are, of course, a lot of people that are transplants here. Um, I'm a mother of two. I've got a teenage daughter. She's a senior in high school, so that is exciting and terrifying all at the same time. And then I have a 10-year-old son who is the epitome of energetic sports boy all out <laughs> sports fanatic wakes up uh, sports, go to sleep sports so that that's fun um so yeah so tell us how we get a hold of you i like to make sure that your contact information is in the show notes a couple different times perfect so it, my email is really easy it's my first name kelly k-e-l-l-y dot kutchin which is c-u-t-c-h-i-n at moneycorp.com and i'll give you my cell phone number which is 863-207-6616. Easy. Kelly.Hutchin at MoneyCorp. C-O-R-P. MoneyCorp.com. Okay. Yep. All right, guys. If you can't remember that, seriously. But I always just want to make sure because I, I really encourage my listeners to reach out to all my guests and, you know, to contact with them because I have the best guests. And your there you go. Like your mic was muted there for a second. Okay, I got you. So, how old are you? Oh my gosh, that is such a funny question because I can never remember. And people kind of tease, like, "Oh, of course you remember," but I always have to go. Okay, I was born in '82, 
So I'm I'm 39. I'm actually remembering a bit better these days because I know that I'm about to hit that big, big four zero mark. 40. Summer of next year. Bring I loved up. turning 40. I was excited when I turned 50. I was excited when I turned 60. I'm always excited for my big decade birthdays. Yeah. I'm not scared. You look Bring amazing. Thank you. You look amazing. See, that. you're drinking Easy water. Day. You got lemon water. You got kids that are out in the sun. You're doing all the good things. So like, I'm later, trying. you'll be happy for your skin that you're drinking water and. And, and I was saying, I, kind of, I cheat a little bit with the lemon water because I use the, uh, the squeeze bottle that's shaped like a lemon. I don't actually buy fresh lemons and squeeze it into my water, but it does make me drink more water. It does. And you know, the really thing good. is when your body is in, uh, I mean, I'm sure you already know this, but maybe somebody listening doesn't. When your body is in like perfect pH balance, it's really hard to get sick. And so the more pH balance we keep our bodies, so we have enough alkaline and enough acidity and we have a good pH balance, the more pH balance we keep our bodies, the harder it is for diseases like cancer and things to grow inside of our bodies. So I'm always telling people, listen, even if it's just a squirt bottle or it's a lemon, if you just drink one bottle of lemon water a day, and you pee on one of those little pH sticks, I bet your pH would be perfect. And the more, the more perfect your pH is, the harder it is for diseases to grow and cancers and things like that. So see, you're already on the right track. And also remember, I am in Orlando, Florida. The heat index today is 105. So I need to make sure that I stay hydrated. I know. I got to tell you though, I lived in Florida in Delray Beach for, uh, well now at this point, including my time with my husband, it's like 45 years. I went there when I was 18. And uh, I was, I love the heat. I'm just like, oh. And then I come up here and on, even on a hot day, it's not that, that hot, humid, like that gets in your bones heat. Like, I love that kind of heat. I love humid heat. It's just, it's hot, but it's like a different kind of heat. And I'm like, mm, I want to go to Florida. I want to okay, like very, bake inside my different. bones. That is a hot day today. Now in the mountains, so we're, so we're, for those of you that hear this later, we're talking in August and it's been like in the seventies, which at 9,000 feet in the mountains is cold. So mm -hmm. I've had to sleep I, with my heated blanket last night. <laughs> Wow. I'm drinking tea. I'm drinking hot boiling tea. It's like, oh my God. But the winter is starting to roll in on us. I think we're going to get snow here pretty soon. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. So, so tell me what Money Core does. Sure. Because you said so, you were the country manager. So that is like, okay, I already want to know about that. Awesome. So Money Corp specializes in currency exchange and international transfers. So we help both individuals and companies move money around the world. A lot of the reason why we transfer money for individuals is related to overseas property purchases, but it's, uh -huh. not, um, it's not strictly that. You know, We help individuals buy luxury goods, send children to study abroad. Um, we help individuals who are receiving inheritance from overseas. So you name it, if there's a currency exchange and international transfer element, we can help. And then, as I mentioned, we have a whole separate division that deals with corporations, both large and small, that have foreign exchange exposure. So this could be companies that are importing and exporting goods or who have staff overseas who they need to pay payroll to. Nice. Yeah, actually, I have a lot of uh, the people that work with me are all in other countries. And it took a minute to figure out how to pay them from here to there to get the exchange and and so I see, I, I could have called you and said, listen, tell me how to do this. <laughs> yeah, that, I, well, kelly.cutchen at moneycorp.com and you've got my cell phone number. I do. Now I've got your cell phone, I'm going to stalk you. Like, hey, listen, I got this guy and how do I pay this guy? So I have people that work with me from India and I have people that mm -hmm. work with me from England. I have a guy that works with me from France. So I have people yep. from all over the country and trying to figure out how to, to pay. And I mean, it's not, not millions like you guys are doing. It's very small. But it's still, there's an exchange rate there that, you know, that makes it a little bit different. But that is really interesting. Now, how does a person get into a job doing that? Because you, I have to be honest with you, you're the first person I've ever met that this is your job is, is controlling the money and things like that. So how does a person like, hey, you know what? I think I'm, uh, I'm going to work in the money country managing. How did you get into that? That's so funny that you say that because I definitely didn't you know, grow up saying, when I grow up, I'm going to be in the, in the foreign exchange industry and help people buy properties internationally. It was not on my radar at all. 
actually, like most people that grow up in Orlando, Florida, I was an entertainer at Walt Disney World um, before realizing, hey, I probably need to get a real job, but that was a lot of fun. Um, and I began work. So not to for- interrupt you, but my <laughs> daughter went to the Disney College program. And, and she, she has did, phenomenal customer service. I'll tell oh you. Oh my God. It's so crazy. Her customer service at any place she ever applied for a job, they would go, you went to the Disney college program and she would just get hired. And, and then she did like, I want to work at Disney until she got really working there and mm-hmm. realized it's not like, you know, you're not on the outside. Just, hey, it's like, it's work. And then she was, I think a little disheartened. <laughs> there are several people that work for me here in Orlando that previously uh, worked for Disney. And actually a few of them came in on the foreign exchange uh, uh-huh. program. So they, they just get great training and really they phenomenal do. customer service. The year that my daughter went, they had 3000 people that applied. They only chose 300. Wow. And she got into the Disney college program. She was but mm-hmm. in the one in California. And yeah. I'm telling you what, it was really something being trained. She took the business executive type of training. Mm-hmm. So it was really something. Yeah. Really so, something. So, so, once I I know, so I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's like, wow, okay. You're one of the only other people I've met that also kind of did that thing like that, but it really does help you in your life to have that background. Yeah. It, it helps you just have good conversations with people, right. From all over the world, yep. every background you're, you're engaged with people from all over the world. So I do attribute some of my success to having that early on training, but I then went on to work for a title company. And that's where I really started to learn about the other side of the, or the, or the real estate transactional side of mm-hmm. buying houses. So I worked for a title company for quite some time and then Money Corp, which is actually a UK based company and has been trading in foreign exchange since the seventies and is really well known in the UK was in the process of opening up an office here in America. And lo and behold, they were opening an office in uh, Celebration, Florida, which is the community built kind of by Disney, right next to Disney, um, supposed to be the perfect little little town. And so Money Corp opened an office there. They needed help just kind of getting off the ground. And I was ready to do something exciting and uh, to help me grow personally. So I joined this international company that I had never heard of. Yeah. And uh, that was 16 years ago. Wow. Now Money Corp is, you know, established throughout the United States and in Canada. We have offices in California, Rhode Island, New York, DC, of course, still here in, in Florida and as well as in Canada. So it's been ex- an exciting 16 years. Because it really does sound like fun. So if, so if some of the real estate investors in America wanted to buy rentals or properties in other countries, they could actually contact you and you could help them make that transaction possible. Yes, that's what I focus on day and night is helping people around the world who are considering purchasing overseas. And the reason being is that we want to make sure that they don't use their banks to make those transfers. So yeah. just like you, Duan, when you've come to a decision or needed to make a payment to these people that you work with in the UK previously, the natural thought process is, let me contact my bank and make a transfer. Right. But the reality is that the, the banks kind of capitalize on the fact that they know you're going to think that. So they charge you large fees, which you don't, you can avoid. We don't want you to be charged fees, but more importantly, they're not giving you the true exchange rate. They're actually taking a pretty substantial margin or spread off of the true exchange rate. So they're not giving you the bang for your buck that you deserve. And if you're only sending a hundred dollars, fine. If they're going to make $10 off of that transaction, so be Uh it. But when you're talking about buying a property for 200, 300, 400,000 uh, euros, as an example, you really need to make sure that you are getting the true exchange rate and not letting the bank make thousands of dollars off of that transaction. You know, I have, I mean, I can name 20 people right now that are traveling to other countries looking to buy properties for Airbnb. Yeah. And none of them, I don't think, I mean, I've talked to them in great detail and I'm not hearing them talk about the money. And I'm gonna, I have so many people I'm going to send your name to. Oh my God, you're going to be like, what did I get on that, that, that webinar, that podcast with that woman? She's like keeping me busy. But I, I know two people right now that are going to um, 
I swear they're going, there. they're going to France or somewhere because they want to sort of retire and they're over there right, like right now looking at properties. And I wonder if they know all of that. Well, I certainly hope they do because the savings, the cost savings benefit is substantial and it's a hidden charge that the banks are making on those transactions. So they should definitely shop around, make sure they're getting the best possible rate of exchange when it comes to making those international payments. And I'm going to send them all thing. your way. I'm just saying, yeah. I mean, honestly, so many investors, so many, I mean, I know thousands of investors at this point and everyone, I guess, you know, with all the crazy that's happening in America, they're wanting to buy properties in other countries. I'm like, listen, I think all the countries are crazy right now. So I, I don't know if you're going to find a safer or, a, or less crazy place, but everyone's wanting to buy uh, things for, I think later, just so they can like, sort of like, you know, live abroad and kind of back and forth. And, yep. and, uh, and I've not had anyone ask me about like a title company or uh, say anything about the money part of that. So yep. I'm sure they know, but maybe they don't because I, I don't think about it. I, I never thought, I mean, I don't own anything out of the country, but I never thought about it either. That so is so interesting. You are seriously the you first person I met that did this. This is so interesting. It's funny that you mentioned that you have some contacts in France right now, because as I mentioned, over my 16 years of working with Money Corp, I would say in my early days, I spent 95% of my time working with customers from the UK that were buying second homes in Florida or customers from Canada that were buying second homes in Florida. Yes. In the last three years, my entire world has flipped and I now spend 95% of my time working with Americans that are looking to purchase in Europe or the, or um, in Portugal or France predominantly. So I want to, this is one of my bucket list things is uh, my, both my parents are still alive. So I, I feel super blessed that I am 62 and okay. I have my parents, but I want to go live in Italy for like two years. But I don't want to go and talk to my parents' past because they're, you know, they're 83 and 85. And like, you know, I've got some aunts. And so I'm, you know, maybe in the next decade. And I told my husband, I said, I'm going to buy something in Italy. I just want to go live. I don't know why. I just like I, when I'm there, I love the way I feel when I'm there. I just want to live there. And I want to own a piece of property. And I just want to live there. Mm -hmm. and like live in a little town and, you know, go to the little markets and just do all the stuff like that. So... Well, something that you should start maybe keeping an eye on is the fact that exchange rates fluctuate constantly, right? And at Money Corp, we have the ability to lock into an exchange rate for up to two years. So maybe you're not looking to consider to make that investment this year, but maybe you're considering doing it next year. But let's say hypothetically that the exchange rate between the dollar and the euro hits a five-year high tomorrow you might want to take advantage of that rate and eliminate the risk of it moving against you between now and your actual investment date in two years or so. So that's I'm another- I'm hearing key. this because I did not even think about it. It's just like, oh, I'm just going to go over there and find some little cute place and just buy it. The last thing that you want to do, and I'm sure we'll get into this, is kind of the, the common mistakes, is you may have someone that's really interested in buying an overseas property right now, and they know what their budget is based on the exchange rate today, but let's say their closing isn't going to happen for three to six, nine months time, and they kind of sit back, paperwork signed. Well, when they go to do that transfer in six months, the exchange rate can be drastically different than what it was when they signed the contract. So they don't want to be caught off guard and last minute be told, oh, you need to come up with an additional $50,000 to buy that same property in Paris that has not changed in price just purely because the exchange rate moved against them. So, uh, you know, if you asked me what was one of the um, more common mistakes that I see, first and foremost, people use their banks. They shouldn't, but we need banks, right? We, we need do. I want to have you give us things. three actionable tips or things to watch out for. Okay. So the first one is not to use your bank. Yeah. The second one would be speak to an expert about locking into the exchange rate. So Which you're not caught you. off guard. Yeah. By negative exchange rate fluctuations. And then let's see. The other big mistake that I see people make is that they move money around without consulting the experts, right? Uh -huh. Because I've dealt with foreign buyers before that think that they're doing everything um, very organized and they're ahead of the game, right? Which we love. However, uh -huh. if you're considering buying a house overseas and as, as an example, and you transfer your funds into your 
into a French bank account. And then you finally find the property of your dreams online and you think, okay, I just need to move the money from my France account into the notaire or the solicitor, or the, the title company, right? Yep. And then you, you contact the bank or you try to log on to your account and you realize, oh, new policy actually states that you can't do a transfer unless you're physically present in the bank. And now these people go, well, wait a second. I live in Colorado, COVID. I can't actually get to France right now to make that little movement of money so that I can buy the property of my dreams. And so again, it's the importance of speaking to an expert before you move the money, because we would have perhaps advised you to hold the funds in either your American bank or hold your funds in your money corp account so that we can easily do a transfer to where it needs to go and you uh -huh. won't get stuck off guard. Nice. So. Yeah, I did not know that. Now, as a, as a real estate investor, I have done over 2,000 transactions and I have had people from Canada. I started in Florida. So I worked in Florida mm -hmm. for a decade in the Palm Beach area. Yep. And I had a lot of people that would buy houses from Canada and they would buy it from me. We closed the title company, but I never thought about their side. Yeah. So for a Canadian buyer, it, make sure that they transfer their money directly to the title company, right? The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. There's yep. no point in that Canadian buyer transferring the money first to an American bank account and then to the title company because one, the money could get stuck in the American bank and it's not very easy to make that little transfer. Okay. But two, everyone's going to take a piece of the pie along the way. Yeah. So the U.S. bank is going to charge a receiving wire fee. And then the U.S. bank is also going to charge a fee to move the money to the title company. So again, get it from TD, RBC, directly to the title company, and you'll cut out all those middlemen along the way. Of course, using you know, money. I wonder, looking back at some of the deals where people um, from Canada bought properties in South Florida, I'm going to go back and look at some of my closing documents. And see, as it just never dawned on me that they have to transfer the money. I'm just like, oh, they're they're paying this amount of money, but I never really thought about. Um, and I've sold a lot of people to Canadians, a lot. And I never thought about the transfer of the money because it just shows up and I get my check. It's like, woo, yay! And we're all excited about it. But uh, I need to be thinking a little more international. I think at this point. <laughs> and it would be interesting for you to look back on those as well and see if any of those clients did use Money Corp. Because obviously we've we've been in Florida for quite some time now. We work with most of the real estate agents and brokers throughout the state, as well as the title companies and the foreign national lenders. So even if it wasn't you, Duan, that introduced them to Money Corp, it could have been the mortgage company or the title company or the immigration attorney they were speaking to or someone else along the way. So they may have used Money Corp, hopefully. Nice. Yeah, one of my best friends down there uh, owns her own title company. And um, I'm going to send her your information today and say, hey, are you working with these people? Because this woman, she closes all deals with just real estate investors only. Yeah. All over South Florida. Ava is like the busiest person I've ever met. She's I hope I know her. her name, do you know her name? is Ava Blumenthal. It doesn't sound familiar, but so yes, I want to speak well, to her because- I'm going to text her your information today and say, hey girl, because she works with people from all over the place and she's uh, mostly works Broward and Palm Beach County, but so many people from other countries buy properties down there. So you know, not only you know, when that- They want to have their, their Florida place to like go and get out of the cold weather. <laughs> Piece of the sunshine, right? But not only that, but like I mentioned earlier about the market really flipping to be being Americans buying abroad, the market also flipped in such a way that you, we saw a massive influx of foreign owners sell their Florida properties and repatriate their funds back home, right? Because one, they can't get here because of COVID. Two, the strength of the US dollar, the exchange rate actually moved in such a way that it made a whole lot of sense for them to sell those dollars and move the funds back home. Not yeah. to mention their property value has probably doubled if they've you know, owned that property for quite some time. Yeah. And the biggest mistake I see from that perspective is that the title company at some point is gonna ask the seller, where do you want us to deposit your proceeds at the time of closing? And the seller that doesn't have good sound advice might say, oh, put the money in my American bank account. I'll worry about it later. And the title company is going to put the money in Bank of America and they're going to be done. Well, when that seller in the UK contacts Bank of America next week to move their money back home, they will not be able to. 
Because there's something called the United States Patriot Act that states you need to be physically present in your bank to do a transfer. So again, I spend day and night just trying to make sure I educate real estate professionals and title companies and anyone else that when dealing with a foreign national, make sure they're speaking to somebody that really understands this because they can accidentally make a really bad mistake. And how much would like, and I know you can't just give me like exact, but let's just say it's a $300,000 house. How much could someone end up paying in additional fees because they just don't know what Kelly Cutchin does? So with regards to fees, $50, right? Very minimal. But the actual profit that the bank is going to make off of that transaction for a $300,000 transfer could be in excess of $15,000. So it's not, it's not pocket change. It's significant amount of profit that banks are making off of these transactions. But they capitalize on the fact that most people don't know the true exchange rate. They're just going to contact us, right? It's, it's like any product. It's a wholesale and a retail kind of market, yeah, but their yeah. markup is quite substantial on currency exchange. That's a lot of money because you're just really giving that to the bank for letting you buy a property. It's like, oh my God, I would be so upset if I had a property out of so country bad. and I ended up with some 20, 15, 20, 25,000 feet. I would have a meltdown. Yep. The amount, we typically say that the amount that you can save using a currency exchange broker versus the bank is going to potentially cover your closing costs, cover your travel expenses, or even cover your furniture package if you're looking to, you know, buy furniture to furnish your new home. So it's substantial. And my favorite thing is when I always tell customers, yes, I want you to compare the rates because it's only then that you're going to realize how much money that I saved you. And it's only then that you're going to realize how much you love me. So yes, <laughs> stop around, compare the rates all day long because I want to, you know, bring you that joy that you saved that much money. I mean, that's really, I, that's a lot. I guess I just didn't realize that. I have sold, like I said, to many out of country people, bought houses for me, but I never thought about their side of it. And I am looking to possibly get something in Italy at some point. I had no idea like that would be, I'm glad I know that now because see, now I learned something new and I can send people to you. And when this podcast comes out, I'm going to tell people, listen, you need to listen, 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 listen. Because I know so many people that, so many people right now that are wanting to buy Airbnbs like all over the world just so mm-hmm. that they can travel to their own places and then keep them rented out. Yeah. So a lot, like really, I know like two people right now that are traveling right now as we're speaking that are looking to get Airbnbs out of country. I know, but with COVID, it's like, gosh darn, you can't even, if you have two homes, you can't really go between them right this very minute. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's strange times. That's for sure. COVID is a hot mess. I'm telling you what, it's just like, seriously, when, when is this going to be over? And it is so ridiculous. It is so ridiculous. So you, so it's really interesting that you ended up into this particular line of work. So when you were younger, you were like, I don't know, 13, 14, 15. What was Kelly doing back in those days? I was dancing all day, all day, every day. I'm sure my mom couldn't get me to stop dancing. Um, I was, I started working at Disney actually when I was about seven so really? it's, a little bit, it's a little bit unique, but I was doing all sorts of Disney shows. Um, I was even pulled out of school pretty often to go do various shows at Disney. I'm kind of sad because I did the grand op- the show, the grand opening for Splash Mountain here uh-huh. in Orlando, and they just changed Splash Mountain. They tore it down or rethemed it to go along with Princess and the Frog, which I'm excited about. That's very, very neat. But my poor Splash Mountain memories are- Oh, they crushed your memories. Going away, I know. But um, yeah, dancing, doing Disney movies, all kinds of stuff. Oh my God, you had such a fun childhood. And you're right, not a lot of people that you meet in Florida are from Florida. So when my daughter, I had her in Coral Springs, Florida, and she got to be older, people were like, you're from Florida? My husband's from Florida too, but he is from Panama City. So Mm -hmm. up in the panhandle of Florida, but we're both Floridians and have two Floridian children. That's so fun. I know. I love that. I love that. And so when you got to be a little older, like say 25 ish, where, where was your head then? What were you doing then? Were you already doing this money manager? No, you were just trying to climb the, you know, corporate ladder. I 
always felt like if you loved what you did, then it doesn't feel like a job. So I just came to work loving what I did every day. Who am I going to speak to today? I loved talking to people from all over the world. And, you know, it was really neat for me to speak to people whose dream it was to own a property in Florida. Yeah. Right. And I was able to get excited with them and talk about, you know, my experience in Florida and how much I loved my home. Well, then in a few instances, I spoke to people that not only moved to Orlando, but they ended up buying properties in, in my community. So to then uh -huh. be able to speak to them when this was just like a figment of their imagination and help them through the process and then be able to meet them and see them at the grocery store just really just brought my excitement to life. So that yeah, is was, such a neat thing. I was early doing. days at Money Corp, but it was the start of um, my happy future here with the company. And now you're the, the you're the country manager, so you. I oversee. Worldwide. I oversee all of our uh, personal clients, and all the efforts behind that here in America. Nice. Well, that is such that is such a neat. That is just such a neat uh, a thing to do. It's just really a neat thing to do. And I know that there's a lot of them, but I just know there's so many investors I know that don't know about this. So I can I'm, promise you they don't. If they're from the UK, I'll tell you that it's a bit, we're a big brand there. And so when you're getting on the tube, you'll see Money Corp. When you're walking down, you know, when you're, when you're in Piccadilly, you'll see Money Corp brand. But internationally, we don't have billboards on the side of the road. We're not in the airports where you go to physically exchange cash. So yeah. we do rely heavily on our, on our global partners, our realtors, our title companies, our immigration attorneys to make sure that their clients know about us so that we can help them with their international transfer. Well, a whole lot more we'll know when the most wonderful real estate podcast comes out and features you because Great. I have, uh, I'm in 35 countries. Wow. I know I only found that out recently. Someone showed me how to look on this chart and find out. I was like, oh, 35 countries. Oh my God. Ooh, I want to see that chart. I know. My second biggest uh, country is uh, the UK. Awesome. So that's good. So I'm on uh, a lot of lists over there. So let me ask you just some, uh, some random fun questions. So what is your favorite food? Uh, lobster. Hmm. <gasps> I don't get to eat it as often as I wish I did because no one else in my family really likes it. And so it's, I don't make myself lobster that often. Um, and then, but my dad and some other family members do their lobster season scuba diving. Yeah. And so I always have my dad save me some lobster in the freezer. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh and yeah. I know my, family, my yeah. husband just is not a big seafood fan. Like how can you not love seafood, dude? I think all those years of living in Florida, like everyone in Florida eats, a lot of seafood, at least down in the South Florida. And now I probably, I rarely have it. I do the one I go to Florida though. Yeah, I go to exactly. the Rustic Inn. There's a place called the Rustic Inn. That's, that's like awesome. super famous. And they have just nothing but any kind of just yummy, buttery, garlicky thing, anything you could think of. Just and you bash everything on the tablecloth and make a big mess all over the place. Yeah, it's really messy too. <laughs> it's so good. I love crab legs too, but everyone else in my family is terrible at actually cracking them open. So if we're going to have crab legs, I know that I not only have to crack my own, but I have to crack three other people's crab legs. So it's like, <laughs> not that. It's an art. Once you now, now I'm I just need like, to train them. Mm -hmm. I just, you just crack through those things once you learn though. What's your favorite band of all time? Uh, Pearl Jam. Ooh. That's a good, that's a good band. And where is your most favorite place? If you travel there and every time you go there, you're just like, ah, everything is right with the world because I'm in this spot. Where is that so, spot? So I can't say that every time I travel there because I've only been there once, but my husband and I went to Virgin Gorda, which is in the British Virgin Islands. And it is the place that I want to be every second of every day. It is breathtaking. It's amazing. Can't wait to go back. It's called Virgin Gorda? Virgin Gorda. Unfortunately, it was hit pretty hard by hurricanes a few years ago, yeah. but they're, they're rebuilding and I look forward to when we can go back. It'll 
be all nice and nice and redone again. Oh, that sounds so nice. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I take a lot of notes. So let's see what how much we learned about Kelly Cutchin today. So kelly.cutchin at moneycore.com. You are the country manager and you work on um, the exchange of money for items, goods, houses, and especially real estate, which everyone, most people listening will be super excited about that. And you're 39, you've got two kids and one's a senior, one's a little sports guy. And you grew up dancing and just being like a Disney girl. You were a Disney chick. That's it. How exciting. And then Very you start fun. climbing the corporate ladder and then you got hooked up with Money Corps and now you're the country manager. So you are an international woman. And the tips are the three actionable tips uh, is not to use your own bank, speak with an expert about the exchange rates and don't move money around without making sure you've spoken to an expert because on a $300,000 house, you could end up losing 15 grand more or less because you don't even know that you should be doing that. You got it. This is so important. So important. Cause I did not know that until today and I've done 2000 deals. I don't know how I don't know that. Well, it's good that we connected before you buy something in Italy. I know. I know. I can't wait. And you love lobster, pearl jam, and the virgin gorda. I love that too. Girl, next time I come to Orlando, we're going to have a big old lobster together. I can't wait. <laughs> I will eat a, 10 lobster tails with you. I always eat a little thing. I love ripping lobsters apart. So at the end of every uh, show on the most wonderful real estate podcast ever, everyone knows that I like to assign a life equity. And I really love it when our guest does it. So what is our life equity and what is our assignment this week? Okay, so your assignment for the week and your equity is family. Ooh, family. Your assignment family. is to take uh, a daily walk, right? So maybe after dinner, walk the dog, but everyone go together on a 10 minute walk. Um, even if everybody can't join, go with the family member that can join you. And it's a great time to just relax at the end of the night have a conversation or no conversation, right? 17 year old doesn't always have a lot to say to me, but <laughs> just spending that quality time together. And I think that it's something that they'll remember for a lifetime. I love that. It is really a good idea. When I was raising my daughter, I was a single mom. And so I didn't meet my husband. I didn't marry my husband until she was 13. And that whole time, every night after dinner, we would go for a bike ride. So I lived a mile from the beach. A bike ride to the beach and back. And it was, a, it's a mile, mile down, mile back. It's not a big ride, but we did it every day unless it was just raining like crazy or just super freezing cold. And she still talks about that now. And she's in her thirties. She you go. Good to go to for your we mind right. and your body and your soul. Yeah, yeah it does. I, I love that. I really love that. And I think families sometimes don't eat together the way they used to. And they're not so into the family unit because everyone's doing different things. And I love that idea of just having everyone just spend like just a few minutes, just go for a walk and just be in each other's space. Mm -hmm. I think being in each other's space is a really great thing. So tell us one more time again, how people can reach you. And is there a social media or a site where they can follow what you all are doing? Absolutely. So email kelly.cutchen at moneycorp.com, C-O-R-P, so moneycorp.com. Or you can always uh, call or text me. My cell phone is 863-207-6616. We are on social media. Uh, it's Money Corp Americas to find the U.S. version of our social media sites. But the best way to connect is reach out by email. I can make sure that you're onboarded. You have daily exchange rate emails. I can give you as much or as little bit of information as you'd like on the foreign exchange market. So I just look forward to working with everyone. It's important for everyone to know that there's no cost, there's no obligation. We just wanna make sure that you're speaking to the experts if this is something that you're interested in doing at some point. Nice, I have to tell you, this has been, for me personally, this has been one of the most interesting interviews I've done because I don't know really anything about that. And I really think I'm pretty well versed on everything. It's like, oh my gosh, this is a giant segment that I don't know much about. So I'm excited now to learn more about this because this is all new to me today. So or thank to you. work together when you have an international client. I hope that we can do that soon. Oh, I will. We have well, here in the mountains in Colorado, we have a lot of people that move here 
and have a second home uh, up mm -hmm. here in the mountains. I mean, a lot. And we just recently sold um, an $800,000 house up here in our community to a couple that lived somewhere. He's a pilot and they wanted to have a second home in the mountains. And uh, we had rehabbed a house and it was like 875000 And I have no idea about their money exchange, but they bought it. So, Well, maybe if even if they didn't use us for the real estate transaction per se, they may have other requirements, right? They may have to send some funds for the upkeep of the property, or maybe they decide to rent that property out and transfer yeah. the funds back home. So you never know. There could still be an opportunity. Listen, everyone I know is going to know who you are. <laughs> really? Um, so do you have like a last little parting word of wisdom that we can take with us? Have a magical day. <laughs> ah! That was on the spot. No. Yes, have a magical day is my daughter is still such a giant Disney fan. She's got mouse here, so I'm like every place she's been to Disney's all over the world. She travels to go to Disney's around the world. Yeah. And I am telling you, it really is something magical. It, yeah. When it's a part of your heart and part of your soul, it just you keep that little piece of your childhood alive inside of you. Yep, it's in there. And too many people lose that when they get to they get older, they get working, they get focused on other stuff. And they lose that little piece of their childhood. And the if you can keep that in there, I think that keeps you young at heart. I think that's for me. I mean, I've got like pink things in my hair it. today because I was like, oh, I'm going to be, today's going to be a fun day for me. I'm going to wear my, my little pink crazy stuff. And I have like little, it lights up. <laughs> I got lucky that I joined on the fun, on a fun day. Ah, 62. And I was like, hey, do not be taking my childhood away from me. I want to have fun all the way. So, uh, so Kelly, thank you so much. I'm honored that you were a guest and spent time with us on the most wonderful real estate podcast ever. And everyone listening, just go to dwonderful.com. Opt in. I've got some free eBooks for you and all of you that are looking to buy properties around and all the people talking about buying Airbnbs around the world. I'm thinking that this girl needs to be your best friend. That's what I'm thinking. I, so many people, so many, so many, so many. So, all right, guys, so remember, we'll be back next time, uh, next week, same bat time, same bat channel. And remember, the truth is in the red letters. Kelly, thank you. And everybody else, ciao. Thanks for Thank me. you for dropping by to the most wonderful real estate podcast ever, making real estate investment wonderful each and every time. Or for more information on how to make your, your real, real estate, estate dreams a reality, reality, keep an eye on dwonderful.com and be sure to become a member.